Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're working on reciprocal graphs, uh, so you can answer questions on exercise 4c. So a reciprocal graph is basically a 1 over x graph or a 1 over x squared graph. So let's look at the basic shape of a 1 over x graph to start with. Hopefully you're familiar with this at GCSE. What we're going to concentrate on here is what happens when x gets closer and closer to 0. So let's start with x is minus 1 and think about plotting these coordinates. Here we're going to get 1 over minus 1, which gives us minus 1. 1 over negative a half, that's going to be minus 2. When x is uh, minus 0.25 or a quarter, that's going to give us minus 4. So you can see here what's going to happen is as x gets smaller, the y coordinate here is going to get bigger. Let's consider what x is going to equal when or y is going to be equal when x is minus 0 0.001. The y coordinate in this case here is going to be minus 1 over 1 over 1,000. So in this case here, it's going to be 1, 000, or negative 1,000. So in this case here, also, sorry, we're going to be on the negative part of this graph. When x is very, very, very close to 0, on the negative side, it's going to be a minus 1,000, so very, very low <coughs> on that y-axis. And similarly for the top part of the graph here, as x gets closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, we're going to see the y-coordinate increase exponentially, so we get a graph that's very high up there. <coughs> we can't divide through by 0 exactly, so this is the first time we've seen a graph that's not continuous. It's going to jump straight from uh, y is a very, very high number down to y is a very, very, very low number when it goes over the x equals 0 line. We don't plot any coordinates when x equals 0. We just leave it alone. OK, so we get these, this rough shape here. So this is what it looks like here. We could extend these lines upwards down here and downwards down here, but it's never going to touch this line here. It's going to get infinitely close to it, but it's never going to actually touch it. So it's what we call these, because these are called asymptotes. Okay. Right, OK, let's have a look at a few simple graph transformations of these. So what we're going to have here is now 3 over x. So that's going to effectively be, if we go backwards here, that's going to effectively be tripling all of these y coordinates here. So that means that on the top they're going to be 3 times as large, and on the bottom here they're going to be 3 times as small. So that effectively means that there's going to be a stretching happening here from this position here of 1 over x to y equals 3 over x at this position here. Now in this case here, it's still going to eventually tend towards the x equals 0 line and the y equals 0 line. Just it's going to be a bit slower in doing that in comparison to the 1 over x graph. Right, another one then. Let's uh, try and flip our graph upside down. So if we go back to our original set of coordinates, they're just all going to be negated. So if they were on the bottom, they're now going to be on the top, and if they're going to be on the top to start with, their y coordinate is going to be negated, so they're now underneath. So the 1 over x graph is going to look something like this, still tending towards the y axis and the x axis like that. This graph here is the same as 1 over minus x. You can effectively factorise out the minus to the front um, and leave it there. So minus 1 over x is the same graph as 1 over minus x. OK, let's consider the 1 over x squared graph now. Let's do this by plotting some coordinates. So first what we need to do is square our coordinates and then do 1 over that answer. So in this case here, minus 1 squared is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. And then 1 over 0 0.25 is 4. That's going to be 16. And then it's going to be symmetrical on the other side of the x-axis, on the y-axis. So plotting these coordinates here, we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. So it's 1 over x squared. Now this graph here, if we compare it to the 1 over x graph, it's going to tend towards these um, 
asymptotes a lot quicker than the um, one over x graph did because we're squaring our terms each time. So that means they're effectively getting smaller and smaller and smaller uh, more quickly. But it's still never going to touch any of these axes. OK, your turn then. Have a go at sketching these two graphs here. Right, OK, I'll whiz through these nice and quickly. So it's going to be a 1 over x graph stretched out by a factor of 3. The 1 over x graph is going to start here. So the minus 1 over x graph is going to start down here and stretch it out by a factor of 3. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to be symmetrical on the diagonal opposite side of the graph. So it's going to go up here. How can you tell the difference between a y equals minus 1 over x graph and a y equals minus 3 over x graph, just try and draw it a little bit further away from the asymptotes as you normally would. Let's put here x-axis and y-axis. OK, for this one here, remember the 1 over x squared graph is going to be on both the top quadrants, so we just need to stretch it out by a factor of 5. So do as best as you can to show that you've stretched it out by a factor of 5. Try and get it symmetrical on both sides as far as you can. x here, y here, and then label your graph as well. It's a good habit to get into. OK, so those are the answers for these two questions. Pause the video and have a go at exercise 4c. Remember that 90% of the learning is going to come through doing those exercise exercises. Make sure that you pause, make sure that you um, persevere through uh, each of the tricky questions, and if you just can't do a question, then go and find your teacher and ask for help. Right, thanks for watching.